sometimes you find something in a video game that makes you think, is this thing haunted? In the spirit of Halloween, today we're going to be diving into the 8 creepiest discoveries that were ever found in video games, part 2. Brought to you by Shudder, the largest and fastest growing selection of thrilling and dangerous entertainment. Go to Shudder.com and use promo code ONHEADER to try Shudder for free for 30 days. Red Dead Redemption 2 Thanks to Ricochet Water and Tescar2 for submitting this discovery on the OnHeader Discord and Reddit. Red Dead Redemption 2 is the game that keeps on giving, as there continues to be an endless amount of unsolved mysteries and discoveries in Rockstar's biggest open world game to date, and will continue to be for a while. In a particularly unusual recent discovery, players started reporting for the first time while exploring around Blue Water Marsh. An inexplicable face would suddenly appear on the screen, which Matt Borden on Reddit managed to capture a small snippet of before it faded away. Oddly appearing on the Blue Water Marsh considering it already happens to be a known haunted location, with a ghostly woman that can be spotted between 9pm and 3am, and possibly even a ghostly horseman based off of this footage captured by C4S0X on Reddit. Though like the ghostly faces, whether or not this is just a glitch is undetermined. Relax. Another supernatural mystery that I've yet to cover involves the Pagan Ritual site, a location that sits on the very edge of the map with no known purpose to the game other than to be creepy as hell. This wonderful human sacrifice even has has a mask that you can take off and put on, which doesn't seem to do much besides offend the locals. You take that mask off right now. Players have attempted to figure out the purpose of the pentagram by making human and animal oh, sacrifices, gosh. and have actually gotten lots of strange results. For some reason, the bodies appear to decay faster than normal here, but after running down the hill and back, the bodies will be brought back from decay, or even be suspiciously rearranged. In fact, I noticed from a certain angle when I got close enough, the bodies would appear to briefly roll around when they spawned in. Some players have gotten the bodies to resurrect entirely, though I wouldn't exactly call that a full recovery. Skizwald on Reddit recently found with the use of the game's debug tool, there appears to be a trigger for a scripted animation that's placed under the altar found here, that when activated places Arthur halfway in the ground, similar to how the bodies would appear. This has led some to believe that when the right conditions are met, maybe Arthur would do a kneel animation in front of the altar, and since those conditions are missing, Arthur only now stands in the ground. Another theory is there was originally some sort of trigger involving the altar, but once it went south, Rockstar decided to move the trigger south and hide it underneath the altar. It remains unsolved whether or not the Pagan Ritual Site, a location Arthur even draws a diagram of after approaching, is a half-finished scenario Rockstar left in the game just for the hell of it, or if the Pagan Ritual Site truly does hold a necromantic act of sorcery we haven't fully solved, or if it's the f*** with us. Considering it is Rockstar, it could be all of the above. Snowrunner Thanks to Aiden Sky for submitting this mystery on OnHeader.com. SnowRunner is an off-road vehicle simulator released in 2020 by Saber Interactive, where players complete various missions and challenges across the rough terrain, doing many exciting activities such as transporting supplies and getting unstuck from the mud. But getting your vehicle stuck in mud appears to be far from the only danger in SnowRunner, as Aiden Sky was playing the game with a friend when they noticed what appeared to be a strange creature in the distance. What kind of animal? <gasps> oh! It's gone! Oh, it like disappears. Do you see I it? Thought, I thought I was high for a second. I thought that was just me. Uh, turns out Aiden Sky wasn't high at all, as more players have reported being frightened by the elusive creature that appears randomly during the game in the Alaska and Michigan maps. It appears to be wolf-like, but it disappears as soon as you approach, making it impossible for any players to get a better look at the creature. Especially odd considering there aren't any other animals in the game aside from some birds. Adding to the mystery, on the Russia map of the game, players on occasion can spot strange glowing eyes watching them at night from the woods from afar. In one particular location on the map, the eyes can be seen far more frequently in an unexplained abandoned village surrounded by a wooden fence. In the location can be found mentions of radioactivity and signs of partial flooding, making the location feel reminiscent of the Chernobyl disaster, the worst nuclear event in history where a nuclear power plant in the Soviet Union erupted which killed many and completely destroyed an environment, the results of which are still being felt today. It's been thought these eyes could represent the lost souls of those impacted by the devastating nuclear explosion and the destructive radiative effects, unless something far more sinister continues to lurk in the shadows of these desolate lonely hills just beyond what we can see. The Crew Thanks to Macus and Cheese for submitting this mystery through OnHeader.com. 2014's The Crew was a game Ubisoft touted for its ability to drive across all of America, if it was squashed and stretched out to whatever this is. The game is essentially an open-world Need for Speed driver knockoff complete with cutscenes that tie in no way to the game, about a driver who works with the FBI who defeats bad guys by racing them. For the most part, the world is pretty vacant, offering variety in the environments but not much in the way of background scenery or off-road props. However, Macus and Cheese point out at this spot in the southern region lies an odd exception, 
as in the middle of a random wooded section far off of any of the game's roads can be found an abandoned black car, with most confusingly a newspaper floating mid-air featuring the headline World Ending. And right behind the newspaper, hidden in the bush, is a dead body. Looks like someone had a crazy weekend. No scene like this appears anywhere else in the game, and who the dead dude is supposed to be is not clear. I did manage to get a closer look using the game's built-in photo mode, but we're not going to get anything there. Strangely, I noticed beside the dead body was what appeared to be a metal bar in the ground. With the use of a glitch I found by zooming the camera all the way out in photo mode and then rotating the camera just right, I managed to discover what appears to be the first time an unused asset underneath the environment of what appears to be some sort of unfinished metal frame. Not that that tells us much, and as if this couldn't get any stranger, the scene made a reappearance four years later in the 2018 sequel The Crew 2. Albeit with some unexpected changes, the same car yet again can be found sitting in the same spot on the game map, despite the surrounding environment being entirely different. Most baffling to all of this, not only does it appear the dead body was removed and possibly censored from the scene, but of all things, the newspaper still remains while the headline has been changed from world ending to cupcake outrage complete with the color image of a cupcake. While this mystery has many haunting questions, none perhaps will ever haunt me more than what the hell does this have to do with cupcakes? Forget about the body, that's disturbing. Tycho no Tastrogene. Thanks to Az and Pierre and Gunter21 for submitting this mystery through the Oddheader website and Discord. Taiko no Tashujin is a Taiko drum simulator by Namco, which is extremely popular in Japan with 27 releases since 2001, as well as a small handful of US releases. The series is about as innocent and not intimidating as it gets, with your only objective being to keep your drum in time to the beat while bright and cheery characters dance on screen. Which is why it was especially strange that data miners found a chilling discovery in the 2009 Wii installment Taiko no Tashujin Wii Dodai and Deny Dai. As inside the files of the game, they found an unused audio file at the top of the song list named First Pie that appeared to be a song that wasn't accessible in the actual game. And here it is modded back into the game. At first it appears to be a fairly normal drum track, until the beat gets more intense and devolves into a horrific audio of a crowd screaming in terror. What the f and as if only to increase the insanity, at one point you can hear a distorted rendition of a Beethoven song and eventually demonic voices which become more intense and disturbing. Yeah, let's just turn that off. Initially thought to only be a test track, things were later confused when six months later an easter egg was found in the DS release Taiko no Tasunjin DS3. As when you were on this screen, if you were to tap on this light bulb, the lights would go out and you could hear this brief snippet of first prime. leading many to believe that the song's appearance in Taku no Tashinjin Wii was actually a teaser for Taku no Tashinjin DS3. However, many also believe the easter egg in Taku no Tashinjin DS3 was simply a reference to the popularity of First Prime, as it became a big meme in Japan after it was found in the game, as people would upload pictures with the name of the song in a distorted face like this. Really had to make it worse, didn't you? It was also supposedly confirmed by a developer on Twitter that it was only ever intended as a test song. Though the only thing I can imagine testing with this is your sanity. Rabbids Coding Thanks to Jonah Wankow for submitting this through the OnHeader Discord. Rabbids Coding is a 2019 installment in the Raving Rabbids franchise, a very kid-friendly spin-off of the Rayman series featuring maniacal rabbit-like creatures that are as cute as they are creepy. Rabbit's Coding is perhaps the most unassuming title in the franchise released for Ubisoft's digital store Ubisoft Connect. For Windows and Mobile that teaches kids basic programming skills by using a programming language to control a rabbit with mind control to clean up a spaceship that's been debased by the rumptious vermin. Nothing particularly strange seems to happen through the all-ages puzzler. The biggest puzzler being why the hell this bloody texture was found in the date of the game. Uh, can we get a programming lesson on how the hell this happened? Why this is in the game is unknown. Though on this texture are signs that do appear in the background of the game, which talk of a laser and a restricted area, all things prone to rabid mischief. Though from the looks of these prints, it looks like the rabbits might have killed a human being. It does remind me that the original trailer featuring the rabbits originally portrayed them as darker, diabolical creatures with unknown motives that needed to be taken down before they were given a more lighthearted appearance. And who's to say that anything really changed? Personally, I don't trust these dudes at all. The Getaway Black Monday Thanks to Dill for submitting this through the OnHeader Discord. The Getaway Black Monday is the second installment in the Getaway series, developed by London Studio for the PlayStation 2, which is basically Grand Theft Auto except you drive on the other side of the road. Black Monday features a new assortment of characters from the previous game, and for the most part, the story features very few connections to the first title. For instance, the location of the prominent Yardy Crack House from the first game is still in the same spot, but has now been converted to a random used car lot that isn't used in the story at all. Despite this, for some reason, if you were to walk around the other side of the dealership, you could find 
find a hole in the wall that leads to a hidden room with no discernible purpose. And as soon as you enter the room, immediately on your right can be found a dead woman lying abandoned amongst the garbage. Oh. As if that wasn't weird enough, upon closer inspection we can see the dead body is actually the body of Susie Hammond, the wife of the lead protagonist Mark Hammond who was killed at the beginning of the first game. Which doesn't make any sense considering the game takes place two years prior, meaning Susie's body at this point would actually look more like this. Not only that, Susie definitely would have received a proper burial after her death and no character related to her backstory appears in this game. So I have no idea what she did to the new developer that they felt the need to desecrate her body and lie it among some trash. Was she put here just so there'd be a corpse or was she supposed to be a placeholder or something? Some have suggested it's maybe just a simple reference to the previous game, like a Mark Hammond bobblehead that can also be found in the game. But if this was just supposed to be a cute reference to the first game, why in the f of all things would you use this? Maybe I'm just missing the dry British humor. Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. Thanks to Seabell for submitting this discovery on the Odd Header Discord. 2019's Travis Strikes Again is an action adventure hack and slash in the third installment of the No More Heroes series, where series protagonist Travis Touchdown and Nemesis Badman are sucked into a fictitious 90s video game console that supposedly grants wishes if you completed six video games, each of which are homages to retro gaming. And no tribute to retro video games would be complete without a creepy discovery to lose sleep over, as Seabell noticed an unnerving observation while listening to the music in the final boss battle of the game. As in the final battle, this chainsaw-like sound effect can be heard in the music track playing in the background. The sound actually happens to be a sample of UVV-76, a real-life unsolved mystery involving a mysterious radio station in Russia that began transmitting an inexplicable series of beeps and buzzes first observed in the late 70s whose true purpose hasn't been confirmed to this day. For decades and even today, by tuning into UVV-76's frequency, the listener can only hear this constant repeating sound. which is speculated to actually be mechanically produced by a machine in a room that's been mic'd up, rather than just being a digital recording, as sometimes other room noises and voices can be heard in the background. On extremely rare occasions, the buzzing has been interrupted intermittently by all things completely random. Most frequently, the buzzing will sometimes pause and a voice will state seemingly disjointed numbers and names. However, on even rarer occasions, some other more outlandish and downright bizarre sounds have been captured in the last decade by increased internet listeners who began constantly monitoring the signal in the 2010s, who have captured snippets of phone conversations being broadcast over the waves, interruptions of recordings from Swan Lake, and even the sound of a woman screaming, which is speculated to have been anything from a television in the room or even radio pirates hacking into the frequency, which many people believe is why Rick Astley was apparently broadcast for a day a few months ago. To this day, no one knows what the purpose of the radio station is, though theories and speculations are plenty, the most popular theory being it's a secret communication channel for the Russian military or another unknown agency, only made the sound unpleasant so others wouldn't be prone to listening in. My favorite theory though is that it's a signal being monitored by the Russian government in case of a nuclear attack. Idea being if a nuclear strike were to hit the unknown location where the signal is being transmitted, its disconnection would immediately signal to the Russians there's been a nuclear hit and prompt an immediate strike back. So radio pirates, you might want to chill on using that station to meme, unless you're not at all concerned with wiping out the community. SpongeBob SquarePants, Tidy Whitey Tumble. Thanks to Reflex Rob you for submitting this discovery on the Odd Header Discord. At this point in the channel, we've gotten to the point where the moment SpongeBob comes up, you can expect something pretty wild. We had incredibly inappropriate images from SpongeBob Super Sponge from my video Most Awkward Discoveries Part 2, which it turns out Google really hates this image, as apparently it was even delisted from Google searches. And apparently they didn't like that video either. We had the shocking out of bounds message in Nicktoons Attack of the Toy Bots, or the code in SpongeBob True for Square. Mystery actually solved on that one. It turned out a little while after I covered it that it's just some developer warp triggers to other points in the game. And of course we have the notorious Yummer from Spongebob Saves the Day. It turned out after I talked to the head designer, he was an inside joke around the developer office that was used as a placeholder for an unimplemented easter egg in the game. Well, okay fine, we got some pretty straightforward answers to some of those, not all, but I'd really love to see someone explain why the hell this appears in the files of Spongebob Tidy Whitey Tumble. Spongebob Tidy Whitey Tumble, a game with the single objective to slingshot Spongebob across Bikini Bottom with the use of a massive wedgie. We've 
all played a launch game like this and this is just like the rest of them. Just get Spongebob as far as you can with basically no variation. No idea what purpose this would have been in the game unless this is to become Spongebob after one too many wedgies. What is it with Spongebob that seems to push these developers to the unfathomable depths of desperate despair and madness? Looks like Spongebob's been watching too much Shudder. The perfect way to get into the Halloween spirit. I cannot recommend this platform enough. The best way to describe Shudder is that it's the Netflix of horror. Your selection of content is amazing. Every week they're adding new horrors and thrillers making this a real horror lover's dream. And I was super excited when they came to me that I could check out their Creep Show original TV show which is airing new episodes every week now. It's from the producer of The Walking Dead, and from everything I've seen, they've done everything right from the original films and then some. The acting was awesome, the special effects were amazing. I was instantly hooked from the first episode. And that's just the start of Shudder's amazing Halloween lineup. They're doing a whole 61 days of Halloween, two months of super size celebration of new movies and series. There's new specials from Elvira, a new season of the Boulet Brothers Dragula, and so much more. It truly is the Netflix of horror. It gives you unlimited access to stream ad-free on all of your favorite devices, including Chrome, Apple TV, Android devices, iPhone, and iPad. To try Shutter for free for 30 days, go to Shutter.com and use promo code ODDHEADER. That's E-D-E-R. Promo code ODDHEADER at Shutter.com to try Shutter for free for 30 days. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. And if you know of any other creepy discoveries in video games that you'd like to see me cover, submit to ODDHEADER.com, come join the Discord, or even send me a shout on Twitter or Reddit. Shout out to Alex. Alexander Knight, Angel the Fox, Ash Photography, Andrew F. F. Bitwit27, Butt Lice, Chad Biscuits, Bro Ups, Combat 15 Bowl, Deer Mid Crowley, Ed Moffat, Eddie Toxpin, Fox M Cloud 123, Kenneth Guitar, Miss Arctic Foxy, Oliver Pearson, Ray Sparrow, Riley S, Robert Eisenman, Scaredies, Scout with a Name, Sneaking J, Taryn Stock, Towerizer, Tricky Skies, Vincent, and Jan Baneer for their Patreon support. Stay tuned.